Hello, this is Natalia Spinoza, and today I want to share with you how are field flights involved in wasting nitrogen. For rangers in the southeast, it's very common to see horn flies, face flies, bottle flies, stable flies, and many other different species during the summer season. These flies live around cattle and other animals because they use manure and waste to reproduce. But in the case of cattle and pastures, horn flies and face flies are more common, since they only use fresh manure to reproduce. These flies have their entire life cycle around cattle. Horn flies suck cattle's blood and face flies lap up the protein-rich secretions from the eye as well as saliva or blood from wounds. Both species have a detrimental effect on cattle's health, causing weight loss, restlessness, and even can transmit some diseases such as pig eye and mastitis. But little is known about how these field flies can affect the nitrogen emissions during the reproducing cycle in the manure. Previous research found that house flies and bottle flies cause higher nitrogen emissions from manure, and it has been suggested that these losses are driven by the larva activity. Nevertheless, the exact mechanism is still unknown. The purpose of this study is to understand the relationship between field flies numbers and, in cattle manure, with the nitrogen losses caused by an increase in ammonia and nitrous oxide emissions. We measured ammonia volatilization and nitrous oxide emissions on the days 1, 4, 8, and 15 after manure deposition. To measure ammonia, we used boric acid traps, and for nitrous oxide, we took gas samples to analyze by gas chromatography. To capture their emissions, we used this white chamber shown in figure 5, that they remain closed for 24 hours, capturing ammonia with the glass jars shown in figure one. And then we came to the next day to take the gas samples and the jars. We determined the initial number of flies that laid eggs on manure and the final number of flies that emerged after 15 days using the net traps shown in figures two and three. We took manure samples on the first day of deposition and 15 days after to evaluate the total nitrogen content. We completed six sets of samples from June to September. Every set was constituted of four sampling, sampling chambers and one control chamber without manure. As we can see in table one, more than 80% of captured flies were horn flies with 4.7% of face flies and 15.3% of bottle flies. It was interesting to see that the greatest larva activity was easily observed on the day four, as we can see in figure seven. When we combined the nitrous oxide and ammonia emissions, we found that the daily nitrogen emissions have a direct relationship with the total number of flies captured, as we can see in figure eight. We wanted to relate these results with the actual impact of these emissions. Therefore, we extrapolated the impact of the 0.03 milligrams of nitrogen emitted for every additional fly to the average conditions for the southern pastures in the US. Here, you can see the data and the calculations made. We found that even on the economic threshold, that, in the, that, that it says that there is not a significant economic impact when the horn fly population is on around 200 flies per animal, even under those conditions, approximately 3,600 kilograms of nitrogen are emitted into the atmosphere, resulting from, from field flights activity in the manure. Further studies are needed to understand the impact of these losses on forage nutrition and soil health. This year, we are going to continue the study on ammonia and nitrous oxide emissions under the same conditions to confirm the trends and accuracy of the results. Also, we will implement a study to analyze the effect of these losses on soil nitrogen content and the introduction of a parasitic wasp, Spalangia endius, 
as a biological control on horse fly and face fly populations. Thank you so much for your attention.